Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. I have a number of these fittings in and about my house, and I believe these are a G23 bulb. So it's a compact fluorescent. There's a ballast in the fitting, and it's got two pins just like that, and it fits in two retaining clips. So these are always blowing up, and the fittings are sort of getting worn and ballasts breaking. They're just a pain, frankly. Um, so I bought some of these, and these are LED replacements. So because the uh, fitting, you know, when you buy them, it doesn't know which way you, around you're going to use them in the fitting. They come with this nice twisty thing, so it allows you to fit them in and then twist them. But can you see a problem? Yes, I ordered the wrong ones. I ordered these, and these are a G24, uh, five watts each. So I thought rather than send them back, because you know, really, it's not worth the P and P. You know, I think these were eight pounds, seven pounds each. It's just not worth the hassle, sort of from China. So I'm just going to actually dismantle these and see if there's anything we can do to sort of make them fit, basically. And also, it gives me an opportunity to sort of cracking the lid on one of these. And uh, that's something I won't normally bulk at. Got myself a different screwdriver. Yes, needs a bit of torque. Let's get rid of that babyish one. So what I'm hoping, these metal pins probably have wires soldered to the ends of them. And if they do, I'll just be able to drill additional mounting holes in there. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Ah, curious. Two flathead screws on this face and two round-headed on the back. So I think the different screws mark the different depths. We'll see while they've done that in a minute. So I was worried uh, if electrically, because of the balusters in there, if LEDs won't work, but judging from the website, it doesn't seem to be an issue. So I'm not quite sure how they're getting by that. Right. So screw terminals on those pins. So that is absolutely great. Ooh. This is gonna make life a whole lot easier. That's really well made. It's the first time I've ever seen actually screw terminals on something like that. Oh. And if we're lucky, we can drill this from the back. There seems to be a sort of couple of little dimples in there. I don't know if you can see them quite on the camera, but there seems to be some moulding dimples just there and there, which we might be able to just drill through. So there's a good opportunity for that. Just check with the old calipers here. So it's about 25.24 mil out of edge to out of edge. Uh, yeah. yeah, I reckon you could get away with it if we do it that way, 25. Yeah, I think that's within tolerance of those fittings. Be able to wedge that in. Awesome, good. Now I'll just have another little have a look. See in here. So it's a nice aluminium extrusion, basically. The LEDs are on a flat plate here. You can screw that off. And yeah, just inside a big old control pack in there, which is probably full of uh, the usual LED type gubbins. But more importantly, it's the actual power supply for these LEDs because they're going to be driven off mains, and the LEDs, of course, aren't mains. Um, 5 watts, so made up by 24 LEDs, although it does say that on the back, doesn't it? Oh, actually it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, well, no. It says it's G24, but that's the fitting. Cool white. It's just going to be a nice simple PCB, and it's actually bonded to the aluminium for heat dissipation. Great. So I'm going to have a little route around for a small drill bit, and I shall see you back here in a moment. Okay, I have a drill. Took me a while actually because my previous, or my other drill, has a uh, massive drill bit stuck in it. And I can only find this one, which has got a dead battery. But I think it's enough because we don't need too much here. So the first thing I'm going to do though is probably extract those existing pins. Okay, that was a lot firmer than I expected. Maybe a little bit of a wiggle. Yeah. Just need a little bit of a wiggle, like pulling a tooth. So if you're doing it right, you could drill the initial hole and then just go around the edge just to smooth those little edges off. 
might consider that. Let's see how we get on though first with these main holes. So there are a couple of dimples in there. We'll use those as pilots. Nice. So we're just ever so slightly small in the diameter of this hole because I want to be able to control it a bit better. So they're actually pushed in from the top. Yeah, I think we can afford a bit of a wiggle now. Open that hole out ever so slightly. Take your care. Take care and due tension on this. Let's grab a pin. Hooray! Yeah, so you can get it in pretty wonk. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and find a slightly bigger drill bit or something just to help me remount that hole so it's got a lip. Let's go do that. So because I need a sort of in-between size, I thought an interesting way of handling it would be using this stepped bit, but rather than use it in the drill initially, I'm going to try just to do that by hand. quite brittle plastic so it's designed to take heat, it's a thermosetting plastic <laughs> or at least thermosetting at sensible temperatures. Let's have a go at putting this pin in again. Yes! That's looking good. Okay so it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit on the wonk, but let's not worry about that. We can unbend this once it's screwed in, but essentially it's fitting into the right place. Let's get the other one in there. I'm going to try this. Might regret it. Nope, that works too. Yes. Pressed it in myself by hand. Yeah, that feels really, I'm just sort of feeling that with my fingers. It feels pretty good. Let's take another measurement. Nice and quickly. Again, 25.39, whatever. 25 is close enough for me. And 25 is close enough for me. Look, if I squeeze a bit tighter, you see I can just push it in to what I want. So that'll do. The final uh, piece of the puzzle now is just to sort of get that screwed in properly. But just before I do, I'm just going to give them one last little squeezy squeeze just to make sure that they're down nicely. Because they've got that slight metal lip on them, it does mean they could sort of protrude slightly higher than the fitting, and that's going to cause us problems when we come to try to install it. Why didn't I pay attention? Last night I watched uh, the Chappie movie and uh, I have to say it was pretty good actually. I, I, I had no idea what Diane Antwoord's performance was going to be in Chappie, but it was alright. Uh, the thing that didn't sit well with me is they're obviously like murderous gangsters as well, um, teaching a robot to be a murderous gangster, so still a bit weird isn't it? I don't, oh, bugger, I don't know how uh, how that sort of fits with, you know, how I feel about the characters of Diane for the portraying in it really. Are they goodies or are they baddies or what? There we go. Just get that all back together and we're in business. So I think that's it, that's the end of the uh, process. It's gonna work pretty well. The pins fit, look the same. Hopefully it'll just last longer and I won't have to change them every year more or less. So I hope that's of some use to you. So basically what, it's say what I'm saying in this video is order the right ones, don't order the wrong ones. Uh, and if you do order the wrong ones and you don't wanna send them back, you've got an option. That's, that's the best I can do, guys. That's the best I can do. 
please uh, leave any comments down below click like subscribe and share if you're that way inclined and as ever thank you for watching